All right, so you want to produce a project, whether it is a short student film, a film for a film festival, like a 36 or 48 hour film festival, or um, a feature film. There are some basic forms you must always get or else this wonderful thing you created can go nowhere. And I mean nowhere without serious potential legal ramifications. So paperwork may not be fun, but there are releases that you must get filled out. Now, we have some releases that the Regent lawyer has looked over. These are still your release forms. No one is signing a release with Regent University. They are signing a release with you, the producer of a project that you happen to be making as a student. So wherever it says your company name, you will be filling out your name, not um, Regent University. Or if you have a production company, you can fill that in. These are starting points for you to use. So. Most important, um, talent, actually, I shouldn't say most important because you have to have them all. They're all important. But for talent, if you are working with any adults, you need to have a adult talent release form that they can sign for themselves. So I've put all these together for you guys in one place of your basic forms you need. So the adult talent release form, um, I'll show you what this looks like. The producer, so that's you, is creating a video and the person agrees to appear in it. They print their name, they sign it, date, address, city, state, that's it, right? And they are over the age of 18. Um, if they are not a current, um, currently enrolled in good standing, you can't use anyone who is in any kind of academic suspension with the university or in trouble with the university, but if they are not currently enrolled or they're not faculty or staff, you also need the volunteer request form. Um, if you're working on a production where you have other people, spouses, friends, parents, whatever working, they would also fill out this volunteer release form before the start of shooting. And that gives information and an understanding that they are not an employee of Regent University, that they are simply working on a student production. Um, so if you are a minor who is on a set, this is where it gets fun. You need at least two pieces of paper for this minor. You need the minor talent release form, which they'll sign and their parent will form. And then under 16, if they're under 16, over 16, you don't need this. You need a theatrical work permit. Um, this trips people up. Don't let it get used to doing this. Yes, some people might argue that because it's not a commercial production, you may be able to get away without this. I would not recommend it. It's free to do. All you need to do is put it in the mail and get it done in time. So if you're going to use a child actor, you get your per theatrical permit application It's on the website. Um, fill it out. This is very important. The part that must be done by a notary public, the parent must sign this in the presence of a notary. Don't fill this out and let them sign it in front of you without a notary. Most banks and um, Banks are a really easy place for people to go and get these notarized. If you have a lot of minors in a film, you might want to arrange for a notary to be present, um, but it's not a big deal. You just want to make sure they don't sign this line until they're in the presence of a notary who can say, yes, in fact, this is the person who signed the form. They are who they said they were because you're going to be mailing this form and they need to know this was really signed. Um, so be careful. I like to put a sticky note on this that says do not sign until in the presence of a notary. Um, and then you need to get it in the mail so that it arrives at this address at least five days in advance of your production. So do not forget to do that. Um, and again, if they are not a regent participant, they would also fill out the volunteer request form. Now, if you're going into SAG, guys, you can use SAG actors on your projects. You just have to fill out the student film agreement and get all this stuff done, okay? So if you're a budget of less than 35,000 and a runtime of less than 30 minutes, you can do a signatory application and SAG actors can work on your films without any problems or having to fly under the radar. But don't wait to do this. Four to six weeks before the first date of work, okay? So don't put it off. You can see um, a PDF sample um, 
of what this application looks like. It's really not too insane. Most of this is just giving you the information about the application. You don't have to do a lot of information. You just need to get it done. Um, all right, materials release. If you're using someone's original materials in the film, like if they composed music, photos, artwork, uh, like so photos, like if they have childhood photos on the wall and you're using them because they're part of production design, this is what they would fill out. Uh, these get used a lot in documentary um, where you're getting materials from people about their uh, past or stuff that they have. Okay, basic form. Um, and you can use that for composed music as well. You wanna make sure any music you use, if this is gonna be shown outside of class, is legally obtained. We do have a subscription for an audio service that can be used for student projects for stock music. Now for locations, don't put this off. There are two different processes for locations. If you are filming on campus, you need to do a production permit. The production permit form you fill out, a professor has to sign it. Um, and you uh, get this submitted and make sure that you get back the approval. Um, give it two weeks for processing. Um, don't put it off. Most of the permits go to admin services. If it's for the School of Communication in the Arts building, it goes to tech op scheduling. Um, if you are shooting off campus, you need to get your signed location agreement and your certificate of insurance request. These are super important. The signed uh, location agreement is that the people realize, yes, you're going to film there and they agree to it. This is the filming, it's gonna be okay. Uh, and they are authorized to allow filming there. Uh, and then your certificate of insurance request. This is the proof that the um, that Regent has insurance. Um, you must get this processed for your off-campus locations. Don't schluff this off. It has to happen. You need the certificate of insurance before your shoot. You're not going to be able to get gear without these things. Um, the last form I want to go over with you is the student film safety protocols. Okay, now the safety officer for your shoot is automatically the professor of your class, unless otherwise specified. Uh, the scripts for normal projects need to be submitted at least a week before your first shoot day so we can check for any safety concerns. Um, guys, no weapons can be used. No actual weapons can be used at any time. Only proper fake weapons. Um, we all have heard the horror stories, guys, where people slough this off. This can't happen. This university safety officer has to approve each prop weapon before use. Okay, so be ready to show it to your professor and to get approval. Uh, if you intend to use a prop weapon on campus, you need to get a permission first from the safety officer and second from the university police. And you have to agree in writing to follow all campus police guidelines and all portrayals of weapons and violence in the film align with the Regent brand guidelines. Um, in very rare cases, permission from the safety officer will be given to fire blanks if a qualified armorer is paid to supervise on set. This is not just somebody you recruited to come volunteer on your set who maybe has experience, maybe doesn't, a paid armorer. Um, don't attempt anything that may hurt, injure, or damage property. Guys, fights are not just knockout, drag out fights. Pushing, slapping, physical contact can lead to problems and injuries, um, especially if the victim falls on the floor. So we have films that have these things in them. So you have a trained safety officer or student who has taken the bash course on set to supervise. So you would email and find out who are the people who I can get right now. Um, and if the actors must fall to the ground, they should always be on a mat and you can get those from the equipment office. Uh, a lot of stunts guys, like falling down stairs, should not be done by regular actors. They should be done by trained stunt personnel. Don't ask a regular actor to do stunt work. This is not going to end well. Um, I have yet to see this happen, but I'm sure it does. Uh, fl filming from helicopters and light planes will only be given to trained aerial camera persons with correct rigging. 
Drones are so much easier most of the time. Uh, that's what happens. Face-to-face -face physical combat is only allowed for trained combat actors from the drama department. No one with severe allergies like peanut allergies can be allowed on set. On outdoor locations, crew members posted to a distant position must be monitored carefully in case they fall ill suddenly. On very hot day, crews working outside must be given a water break every 30 minutes. A water break means filming is suspended for everyone, including the actors. Um, I have been on many sets where not enough water is drunk. Everybody wants to get their job done. But then the next day, half of the people are out with heat exhaustion. Don't push it. Have water. Make sure people are drinking it. Um, every set should have a safety officer and small crew's safety is the director or first AD's responsibility. Um, don't let safety slide, guys. Don't let it slide. Make sure that your shoots are permitted by the city and ensured of containing more than a tripod, camera, and bounce cards, basic lighting, or where city policy mandates. You get insurance through Gale and Regent University. We just went over that form. Um, equipment will not be approved until these things can be verified. Um, you may not allow participation on any level by someone currently suspended, expelled, or barred from Regent University. All persons participating on any level must complete a Regent University waiver before participating. The only exception, exempt people are affiliated with Regent University by being a student, faculty, or, fa faculty or staff. Uh, and that's that volunteer form that we discussed earlier. So you must print and sign this and submit it to the professor on your project. Now for the 36 hour film festival, there's no way you guys are gonna be able to go through the process of the script getting approved a week in advance of your shoot since you can't sub even write the script a week in advance of your shoot. So in that case, you simply cannot do anything that would be deemed in violation of the safety protocols or require additional personnel on set. So there can't be any weapons or any fights or any stunts on your 36 hour films. I hope this was helpful for kind of going over the basic forms. And it really, it doesn't matter if you're doing a student shoot or a professional shoot, these forms must get done. You have to do talent forms, you have to do location forms, you have to do agreements. That volunteer form, um, most places you would, or most circumstances, basically that's your substitute deal memo that you would have with every single cast and crew member. So in student world, you get to kind of build up to that. Don't skip the paperwork because your project can't go anywhere without it.